Good evening. Welcome to Monday Thursday. This is a night where we remember Jesus and his Last Supper on earth. We remember his great command to love one another. We remember that he is betrayed by a friend. We remember, take the time to remember what is before him. He's going to die on a cross for us. And as we remember all of this, I am going to invite you to do several things. I would like to invite those who are at home, if you have not taken the time, to now take the time to find a element, a fruit of the vine, grape juice or whatever you may have, and bread as we will celebrate communion. But I also invite all of you at home and those who are here, there are, uh, to get a piece of pen and a paper because we'll be writing down our sins. Now. What you should have here in the sanctuary is a small piece of paper, and I'm hearing lots of jokes that you can't fit your sins on this. So I'm going to ask you to please write small if you are compelled to write that much. But what you should also have is a white pen with purple tips. For the confession during that time, you're going to be given time to write down what you would like to be forgiven for. And that purple pen will dissolve. And the ink will dissolve in water. So we're going to come forward during that time of communion. And I will invite you to take the time and place that paper into the water. And you have to place it pretty deep for the ink to fade. And it will take one or two minutes. So I ask you to please stand at that bowl and submerge that piece of paper until you see that the waters of baptism, they cleanse us of our brokenness and of our sin. We had only anticipated having 30 people, so this may take a little bit longer than we had thought. Uh, but we will take that time to see the cleansing waters of baptism wash away your sins. Now let us uh, take the time to worship and remember Jesus and to celebrate, uh, well, to honor him in the great sacrifice that he has given for us. Please join me in the call to worship. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. From this day, Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. On this day, Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. On this day, the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us. On this day, Christ our God gave us this holy feast that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection and at the last day may reign with him in heaven. O oh God, your love was embodied in Jesus Christ, who washed disciples' feet on the night of his betrayal. Wash us from the stain of sin, so that in hours of danger we may not fail, but follow your Son through every trial and praise him always as Lord and Christ, to whom be glory now and forever. Amen.
seated. The one who was without sin received the baptism of repentance, so that we who have sinned may be covered by his righteousness. Remembering the waters of our baptism, we approach the risen Christ and humbly ask for forgiveness. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Eternal God, whose covenant with us is never broken. We confess that we fail to fulfill your will. Though you have bound yourself to us, we will not bind ourselves to you. In Jesus Christ, you serve us freely, but we refuse your love and withhold ourselves from others. We do not love you fully or love one another as you command. In your mercy, forgive and cleanse us. Lead us once again to your table and unite us with Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which we grow in grace. Lord, remembering the waters of baptism, we surrender our sins to you. Please come forward as you are moved.
The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. May the God of mercy forgive you all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Live into the peace of Christ.
God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out upon us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that being taught by you in Holy Scripture, our hearts and minds may be opened to know the things that pertain to life and holiness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now our scripture reading uh, tonight is from the Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But it is to fulfill the scripture. The one who ate my bread has lifted heel against me. I tell you this now before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Very truly, I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread, and when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from the world and go to the Father. No, where are we? I'm sorry. I just lost my question. Okay, try that again. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, 
and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I have said to the Jews, so I say now to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Please bow as I lead us in prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be honorable and acceptable unto you on this most holy of nights. In your name we pray. Amen. Have you taken the time to imagine the absolute confusion of this night for Jesus' disciples? Imagine what the disciples may have felt as they tried to understand what was happening before them. We, all of us, we have the gift of time. The events of this night have been interpreted and translated for us over and over, over the past 2,000 years. You and I, we, we have the image of Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper. We have various images that describe both the humanity of this night and the divinity of this night. Time has given us the ability to understand why Jesus needs to wash the disciples' feet. We know Judas will betray Jesus in a kiss. We know that Peter will deny Jesus three times before the rooster crows. We know that with the gift of time and looking backward. The disciples had no idea. They had no idea that this night would be remembered for centuries. They had no idea that the bread they ate and the cup they drank would become the sacramental food that would sustain Jesus' people for the next two centuries. Picture yourself in that upper room with the disciples. Imagine you are there, whether you're at the table or whether you're the person who has helped to prepare the bread and to provide the drink. I I imagine that there was a lot of energy, but there was also fear. The religious establishment is absolutely furious with Jesus. The people that gather in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover are in turmoil. I imagine they are asking, who is this man that rode in on a donkey and turned upside, tables upside down at the temple? Who is Jesus? What is he doing? Is he the Messiah, the promised one? Or is he an influential heretic who is going to lead us astray? The disciples know that Jesus is their teacher and Lord. They know that through him they have seen the love and mercy of God. Given the triumphant entry into Jerusalem, they anticipate that he is the king that will save God's people. So imagine their confusion when Jesus insists that he wash their feet. They gather in the upper room to celebrate the Passover, and Jesus begins to do things that they were not anticipating. The disciples see Jesus as their teacher and their Lord, and they want to honor him. But Jesus 
reverses the roles. The Holy One honors the sinner. The Son of God serves the people. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. Peter wants to refuse Jesus' offer, and Jesus responds, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. The confusion continues. He tells the disciples that he will be betrayed. He dips the bread in a dish. He gives it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. He tells Judas to do quickly what you are going to do. The others are witnesses. Imagine asking yourself, what is Jesus doing? What is Judas going to do? Surely Judas will not betray Jesus. Surely Judas is going out to buy what is needed for the festival. The talk of betrayal makes no sense in the upper room. They are Jesus' faithful followers. Jesus is their teacher and Lord. There is no room for betrayal. Jesus is betrayed by a friend. Judas leaves the upper room and, and plots to turn Jesus over to the religious authorities. With our gift of time, we can look back and say, yes, that needed to happen so that he could go to the cross for us. And there is truth in this statement. But I wonder if it lessened the pain any for Jesus. He still had a friend, a follower, one with whom he trusted the purse or the money, who betrayed him. That person approached him, kissed him, and Jesus was crucified. And Judas wasn't the only friend who betrayed Jesus. Peter denies him three times before the rooster crows. And in this place of Christian life, we see another paradox. Jesus is betrayed by those that love him, and that betrayal leads to the death. And in the same moment that the betrayal begins to unfold, Jesus teaches his disciples, Jesus teaches us to love one another. In that same moment of profound pain, he gives us a new commandment. Love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. Everyone will know you are my disciples. If what? You love one another. On the night he is betrayed, he commands us to love. We have betrayed one another. In our confusion, we whisper words that tear down rather than lift up. We participate in events or circumstances, and when they don't go as we anticipate the way that we wanted them to go, then we may have felt hurt, scared, angry. And in our hurt and our grief and our fear, we take action. And often that action may hurt more than we intended. The action becomes a roadblock between neighbors and friends and family and the people that Jesus calls us to love. Living in Christian community is complex. And often feeling felt betrayed is not something someone else had intended. Maybe one person was trying to pursue a vision they believed they were called to do while another felt betrayed. It happens in the Christian life. Judas betrayed Jesus. Peter denied Jesus. Paul persecuted Jesus' church. And each man participated in a painful part of Jesus' church. In their humanity, they went to a very dark place in the human heart. And it is from that darkness that Jesus redeems 
and redeemed and redeems his people. Jesus raised up his people. Jesus created his church. Jesus changed the course of history, and God's love has been and will continue to be proclaimed to God's glory. Betrayal is part of the Christian life because it is part of our broken humanity. And Jesus knows what is in our heart, and he knows that only he can wash us clean. So we gather on the night that he was betrayed. We confess that we have betrayed our blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We confess we have betrayed Jesus' church. We have betrayed those we love, often without even knowing it. And in our confession, we are greeted in love and with forgiveness. Jesus shows us how to forgive. Jesus shows us how to serve one another, how to follow him, and to do what he did. Betrayed by those he loved, he marched on to the cross, passed through, and although he could, he pressed on through, and although he could have stopped at any moment, he laid down his life for you. He laid down your life for you. He laid down your life for me, for his people. And he cried out, I forgive you. Forgive one another. I forgive you. Forgive one another. Monday, Thursday is an evening when I believe that Jesus says, I know. And I forgive you. And I believe he invites us to say, as we strive to walk with the Christian life together, to say to one another, I know. And I forgive you. And the people of God say, Amen. Please stand for an upper room did our Lord Prepare. <laughs> Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from the east, 
and from the west, from the north, and from the south, and gather at table in the kingdom of heaven. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table, he took the bread and he blessed and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and then their eyes were opened. May we recognize our Lord as we celebrate in these gifts. This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites those who trust in him to share in the feast, which he has prepared. Creator God, you knew us before we were formed in our mother's wombs. You sent your Son so that we may continue to know you and walk with you as we seek to serve you in our earthly lives. We praise you for your love is endless. Your mercy extends to the heavens. You invite us into your presence to praise you. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is, is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus, you came to save the world. You walk the earth so that we may have an abundant life in relationship with you, our Savior, our teacher, our friend, our Lord. You suffered and died upon the cross, and there you conquered the darkness of death and the darkness of our sin. You were innocent, yet you gave your life for us. We lift your name on high. May all praise, honor, and glory be yours. Grateful for your gift of the Holy Spirit, we ask that you, our gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these, your gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. That the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and the blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. And as this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. On this night, O oh Lord, we lift up to you the many people that have been impacted by the bridge tragedy, remembering the families who are longing and wondering about their loved ones. We lift up to you the many workers that are impacted as the port is blocked and as they are not able to traverse, traverse the bridge as easily as they could. We lift up to you, O oh gracious Lord, all that is happening across this world, remembering the children in the innocence that are standing in harm's way from Palestine to um, Africa to our own city streets, oh Lord, in South America. Oh Lord, we pray for those who are standing in harm's way. We also thank you, Lord, for the many men and women who stand on our behalf creating the space and the place where we may worship and glorify you freely. In this time of silence, O oh Lord, we lift up to you those that are upon our hearts. We ask for their healing, and we ask for your loving grace and comfort. Grateful for the prayer that you taught us, we now unite our voices with those who have gone before us and those that will follow, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us, us this day our daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us, us our debts, as, as we forgive our debts. Our debts. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, 
This is my body broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant, shed for the forgiveness of sin. Every time you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he come again in glory. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Wes and I will stand in the center and we will ask that you take a cup of juice and that you take a cup with the bread and then come down the center aisle and then return by the side aisle. Anyone who remains seated, Wes and I will then come serve. We will drink of the cup and eat of the bread in unison once we have all been served. Please come forward and enjoy this peace that Jesus has given us.
the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Please join me in the prayer after communion. God of grace, your son, Jesus Christ, left us this holy meal of bread and the fruit of the vine in which we share his body and blood. May we, who have celebrated this sign of his great love, show in our lives the fruit of his redemption. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day and you do not answer, and by night but find no rest. Yet you are wholly enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved, and you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord, let him deliver let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help.
Go in peace. Because Christ loved you. Love one another.